For today's video, we're gonna have a look at an 8-year-old Samsung all-in-one PC. For some reason. I'm not entirely sure why I bought it. It was definitely one of those late night impulse eBay purchases. But now that I have it, I'm gonna try and play games on the poor little bastard. And then, to finalize my revenge on it, I'm gonna rip it apart and have a look at its insides. Which are actually much more interesting than I was expecting. It's like a laptop strapped to the back of a TV with a surprisingly big cooling solution attached to that. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. But before that, we have a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is an affordable, powerful way to host Linux-based servers in the cloud. If you want to host your own game servers, Linode is for you. They support games like Rust, CSGO, and Minecraft. The Java edition, which we all know is clearly superior to the Bedrock edition. Also, if you need a VPN to surf the internet without prying eyes looking in, Linode has you covered with easy one-click installs for personal VPNs like WireGuide and OpenVPN. The best part about setting up your personal VPN server is that you can be sure that there isn't a middleman company looking to sell your data. Linode has some of the best customer support in the business. I mean, just look at how seriously this dude takes his customer support. Regardless of your pay tier, you'll get through to a person that'll help help you sort out your problem. If this sounds good, sign up using the link in my description for a $100 60-day credit. Thank you very much, Linode, for sponsoring this video. I actually have no idea why I bought this eight-year-old all-in-one PC, but I've done a video on like an old iMac, so why not do what is basically the Samsung equivalent of that? So yeah, let's get into the package. Uh, this packaging does not inspire a huge amount of confidence. Look at that. <laughs> There's like super weak ass foam. Look at that. They shipped it internationally in a box like that. I mean, look at the packaging in here. There's a little bit of foam down there, so that means it should be fine, right? This is the power brick in what looks like a used Ziploc bag. So that's why it smells so much like paint, because it's just like spray-painted cardboard box on the inside. Uh, and then we got some peripherals. I think these are the stock Samsung ones, actually. You can see that they were trying real hard to copy Apple with this design, uh, but it's actually not too bad. Although, no, it's pretty gross. The mouse, however, is A-grade e-waste peripheral. It does look suspiciously just like a Samsung TV, but this is actually an all-in-one computer from not super long ago. And it looks pretty good. Apparently, this is a touchscreen. I'm assuming this is the 24-inch one because it's definitely not 27 inches. It's, it's way too small for that. Then down here, it's got touch menu controls in the front bottom right. Oh, it's really heavy. Looking at the back, um, there's not much going on here. The rear I.O. is actually tucked underneath the bottom there, which looks very neat, but it may be a real pain in the butt to get to. Over here, you've got a glory hole to get access to the memory. And then this is like a little slot that you open up and then you get access to an SD card reader, two USB 3 ports, and two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. That's pretty cool that you can hide it under this little door. And on this side, it's got a DVD drive, which dates it a little bit. I'm guessing around early Mesozoic period. Under here, we've got IO, which is way too difficult to access. But, I mean, it looks decent. You've got what looks like a power connector here. And then you've got Ethernet. You've got two HDMI and then three USB. Now, as far as I know, you can actually use this as an external display. So this would be an HDMI in and an HDMI out, which is pretty cool. It was a way for Samsung to guarantee that you can get more use out of this than just the life cycle of the PC hardware inside it. I think that's pretty cool. And then finally, we have a couple of speaker grills in the base. Oh, this little bit of front fascia is coming off. It is pretty dirty. I'm definitely gonna have to give it a clean, he says, knowing that he never cleans any of this stuff. Okay, now let's have a look if it works. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the specs are of this thing, so we're going on a bit of a journey of discovery together. Uh, so let's see if it works. 
Ooh, the Samsung lights up and the button over there. That screen is very dull. The screen is extremely reflective, so you're gonna have to look at my face for most of this. I'm, I'm sorry, I do apologize for that. Several eternities later, and we finally booted into Windows. It is, it is the first time though, so that does make sense. But let's have a closer look at what this system's packing. CPU-wise, we've got an i5-3470T. Fun fact, the T at the end of Intel CPU names actually stands for trichomoniasis. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't Google that one if I were you. Um, but yeah, basically, I don't think the gaming performance is going to be very good, but we'll, we'll have a look at that soon. And I think GPU-wise, we're using the iGPU in this, which is gonna be an older Intel iGPU, so that may be one of the big bottlenecks we have. Although, we do have six gigs of RAM, which is which is not too bad. Like, I wonder if it's a socketed CPU or if the CPU is soldered down. I think we're, we're gonna have to open it up and have a look a bit later in the video. So apparently it's a touchscreen. Hey, look at that. That is a pretty decent touchscreen, actually. Uh, let's actually look at what resolution they're wor we're working with here. It looks like it's not a very high resolution display. 1280 by 1024, no way. That's definitely a limitation of no graphics card drivers installed yet. Let's, okay, there we go. It is actually a 1080p display. I was about to say, there's no way it's a 1280 by 1020 display. Like that makes no sense. That looks way better. Okay, so with that, let's, let's try and play some games on this bad boy. Okay, well, straight in the menu, we're stuck at 13 frames per second in CSGO, so that's always a really good start. Oh wow, that's not, that's not feeling good. This is like GT710 level gaming performance. Now we do have bots running, which does negatively affect the uh, actual gaming performance, regardless of what Linus says. The display is beautiful. Input lag is not the worst considering the frame rate. Like a GT710 definitely has more input lag than this. It's not great. I mean, I wouldn't call this playable. One thing that I will say is that the system is whisper quiet. Like it's not making any noise. We're sitting at about 63, 64 degrees Celsius on the package temperature of the CPU and it's so quiet. It's really impressive. Oh, when it comes to GTA 5, at pretty much the lowest settings at 1080p, it's not going well at all. That little iGPU is just... I don't think struggling is a strong enough word here. Although, we're also clearly running into RAM limitations, right? Because we've only got access to 6 gigs of RAM, and yeah, I think... Oh, that's some of the worst GTA 5 performance I've ever seen in my life. This is definitely cyberpunk on a PlayStation 4 level gaming experience. Like this is absolutely horrendous. So we've dropped it down to 720p now and um, it's still unplayable. We're still sitting at like just under 20 frames per second average. I mean, that is almost double the... Ah. Okay, so we've dropped it to 800 by 600 and it's really confused the full screen option. <laughs> It, it feels okay. Dota just somehow manages to run on the utmost garbage. Like it really, it really is impressive how well Dota handles these horrendous PCs. Oh, okay. There was actually a noticeable frame drop when we, oh, look at that. Oh no. That, that really tells you a lot about this system that you're hitting in the 40s in Half-Life 2. Look at that. It's just like, we're sitting at less than 40 frames per second. And there's not even much going on at the moment. Like, yeah, it really is crazy how far these loser iGPUs have come in, in not even that long a time. But with that, let's, let's open up this bad boy and see what it looks like inside. Because this cooling solution is very impressive. Like, I'm right next to it and it's... It's barely audible. It is so quiet while gaming. I, I, I really want to see how they actually achieve that. I'm real excited to tear this open and have a look inside. I'm curious to see how they get it so quiet. So now I'm gonna use the trusty Splooger, I think this is what this one's called.
Oh, the oof. I am definitely taking this thing's virginity. I can tell you that right now. I feel like I should be censoring what I'm doing here. Ugh. We got it open. Look at that. That's a really cool looking uh, cooling solution. That's a huge fin stack you got there with a reasonable fan that's not been uh, cleaned out recently, but huge heat pipe running to that. That looks really cool. I'm curious to see if this is a socketed CPU or if it's like soldered onto the main board. It's normal SATA interconnect, so you should be able to fairly easily change that out for an SSD. But on that note, let's open up this and see what the CPU looks like underneath that. Oh, wow, that popped off way more easily than I was expecting it to there. Mmm, that fin stack. I'm excited to clean it out. It is a socketed CPU. Um, so you could change that out. That thermal paste definitely needs re, uh, reapplying. And I actually think that'll help the thermals even more. So if you just put some fresh thermal paste on there. But that's cool. It's, it's really easy to access all of this stuff. You just need a little bit of a splooger to get in there. And there's, there's definitely some virginity breaking action. But other than that, like, it's not hard to get into. You can see that there are also screws so that you can easily remove the motherboard. This thing is perfectly serviceable, which is pretty cool. After all of that, I cleaned out the heatsink, the fan, repasted the CPU, put it all back together, and we got more than 10 degrees Celsius lower temperatures on the CPU while running Cinebench, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it didn't lead to any performance improvement, which is a bit of a shame, but it shows that there's headroom in that cooling solution. So let me know if you want me to do a follow-up video where I strap electrodes to its face, slowly increasing the voltage until it loses consciousness. And by that, I mean just drop a high-end CPU in there with like an external GPU dock and try and get the most gaming performance possible out of it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one.